As bass fishermen, we spend a tremendous amount of time in our boats, literally just tinkering with tackle. We're always trying to find the next best presentation, the next best thing that's gonna help us to catch bass better than our friends. With so many different brands and so many different lures, it can actually be not only overwhelming, but very expensive to try to find that next new thing that's gonna help you to catch bass. But one thing that I have actually seen double my catch rate at times is simply adding different blades to your already existing lures. This is really an inexpensive option that you can use that that's going to help you catch more fish. The first time that I heard of somebody actually adding different blades to lures that you really wouldn't normally add a blade to was actually back in 2012 at the Bassmaster Classic when Keith Poche was simply adding a little spinner onto the back of his soft plastic stick bait and he nearly won the Bassmaster Classic that year fishing that lure. When I saw that, I was first amazed and second I thought I can do that exact same thing and it might help me to win some tournaments locally but I didn't act on it right away and like a lot of us anglers as well I just kind of forgot about it and then three years later I was actually fishing down in Florida with my uncle just like when you get two fishermen in the boat what are they gonna do they're gonna compete against each other like crazy we were flipping different reeds with different soft plastics but one thing that my uncle was doing was he was also adding a small blade to his stick bait that he was flipping into these reeds. Of course, we kept track of all the fish that we were catching that day, and my uncle literally caught twice as many bass as I did, and it was all because of that little blade. Get him now! That's what I'm talking about. Tyler ain't got nothing on the old man. That's really when I saw it in action, and after that, I knew it was something that I needed to start doing. And in today's video, I just want to show you a couple of the different rigs that I use, the blades that I use to help me get more bites out there on the water. That's really going to help you catch a lot of bass. Now, although these different blade options can help you to catch fish, sometimes they can actually be a little bit too much for the bass. So there are certain situations where the blades are really gonna help you, and there's other situations where they might actually hurt you. So first, I really just kinda wanna list off a few of the times that I really like to use blades on my different baits. The first option is during the pre-spawn, and this really derives from Keith Poche and what he did during the pre-spawn in the Bassmaster Classic. Some of the best lures in that pre-spawn time frame are lures like chatterbaits and spinnerbaits and crankbaits, baits that have a lot of vibration. Adding little blades like Colorado blades to your soft plastic will give those baits a little bit more vibration, and it seems like the bass really like that vibration during the pre spawn. Another time outside the pre spawn that I love to add blades is really any time I'm fishing in pretty windy conditions. It seems like if you're out there fishing and you have a lot of wind, adding a blade simply just helps a bass to kind of see that bait from a distance and track that bait from a distance. This is going to allow that bait to have more drawing power, which is really going going to allow you to catch more fish. Now, another time that I will incorporate a blade is really if I'm just simply trying to be different. When I got whooped by my uncle down in Florida, we were fishing Lake Toho. A lot of guys flip some sort of soft plastic stick bait on that lake and the bass always eat them, but him adding that simple blade was just something different and that's why he was catching more fish on that day. Now, doing that really comes down to experimentation and again, it's best to have two guys, one fishing one bait, one fishing a bait with blades, to see which one of you is going to catch more fish. You may find a time where adding blades to your lures is gonna help you that's outside of what I just talked about. But if the fish are biting it, the fish are biting it and you should keep fishing it. Let's dive into a few of the lures and combinations that I really like to put blades on. Just so you guys know, all of the blade options that I'm about to show you can be found at sportsmansoutfitters.com. The links are in the description if you guys wanna pick some of these up. 
The first option and something that I really like to do is actually adding blades to your jerk baits. There's a lot of different jerk baits out there on the market that are really great for this. This is the Berkley Stunna. It's another bait that I really, really like. Now you could actually probably rig up a small blade on a jerk bait yourself. But what I really like to use are these VMC bladed hybrid hooks. And for most jerk baits, the number six is the size that you wanna go with. Now again, one of the times I like to throw a jerk bait with blades are during the pre-spawn and again in windy conditions. Now you could put a bladed hook on every single hook of that jerk bait, or you could just put it on one of the hooks or two of the hooks. A lot of times what I'm gonna do is simply just add one bladed hook to that front treble. Adding it to that front treble, that bait is still gonna sit right in the water, but it's also gonna have that extra flash from that blade. The other reason that I like to add it to that front treble is because some Sometimes that blade is just a little bit of a target for that bass to kind of seek out. And if I want a bass to hit a jerk bait, I want it to hit it on the main body and not necessarily the tail of the bait. Now, the other lure that I add a blade to at times is actually a top water lure. Now, you should know that sometimes, depending on the top water that you are using, adding a bladed hook to that bait sometimes can affect the action a little bit. Not as much as you might think, but sometimes it will affect that action. So you really just kind of have to experiment with the top waters that you own to see if that blade is gonna affect the action or not. A lot of top waters out there are gonna take a number four size hook. Some might even take larger, like a number two size hook. But one of the best times to actually add a blade to your top water bait is when the bass are feeding on those really, really small shad. Usually towards the end of summer, the bass really start to feed on these little one inch size shad or even smaller shad at times. The bass get attracted to the noise of the top water, but when they hone in on that bait, they're going to see that little blade kind of down there kicking and wiggling all over as you're bringing it and that's their target. And that's a lot of times the hook that they're going to bite. Now adding a bladed hook different times of the year could definitely work. I have just seen it to work the best during that kind of end of the summer, early fall period when you have a ton of those little shad. Now the next option that I really like to do is add a little Colorado blade to the end of a soft stick worm. This is what Keith Poche originally did. Now what I like to do is use these little Colorado blades and especially these little red ones that I'm about to show you. This is a Humdinger Poche Power Spinner. Okay, this is literally by Keith Poche himself. Now, one of my favorite worms to add this to is either a green pumpkin red flake or a watermelon red flake Cinco style bait. What you're going to do is either cut off or bite off about a quarter inch of this bait to give it a little flat spot. And you're gonna take the blade and the screw part of this blade is called a hitchhiker. So you're gonna take that hitchhiker and you're gonna actually just screw it in the end of that bait. Now using that watermelon red or green pumpkin red worm with that little red Colorado blade is a deadly pre-spawn color that catches a lot of bass. A lot of us know that red during the winter in pre-spawn is a great color. So what I like to do with this worm is cast it out weightless and literally just reel it just below the surface. You can reel it by wooden laydowns. You can reel it by vegetation like lily pads and reeds. You can really reel it wherever you want. Again, this is just something different that the bass haven't seen and they will absolutely gobble this up. If you don't believe me, you can at least believe Keith Poche. Now, when I got beat by my uncle flipping down in Florida, he was actually using a very small willow leaf blade like the one that I'm holding here. And he had it rigged up pretty much the exact same way as I rigged up the last bait, except for he was using a Texas rig with a 3 8 ounce weight on the top. And then he added the blade to the back and he was flipping and pitching that into reeds. The biggest thing that I have seen, if you're fishing a bait like that in heavier cover like reeds, you want to use a really small blade. The bigger blades tend to catch up on the cover and sometimes they can pull out. And with that being said, I want you guys to know that 
you are going to lose some of these from time and time. So if you buy some, buy a couple of packs. These typical packs come with, I think, five different blades in them, and the blades are fairly inexpensive. You are going to lose some. Just know that it's going to happen. The options are really endless here. You can add those little blades to a lot of different soft plastic baits in a lot of different ways. I've actually seen people add the blades onto the hook of a tube jig, and they'll fish a tube jig for smallmouth with that small blade coming off of it. And that can be a game changer at times. Now, the next option that is a really, really great option, an option that catches a lot of fish is actually using this owner flashy swimmer. This particular hook was really made for a swim bait and you can fish all kinds of different swim baits on it. Something that I like to do is fish like a 4.8 or a 5.8 inch Kitex style bait with this hook. This is another great option that you can really fish anywhere. We actually saw Buddy Gross win a big tournament a couple of years ago, fishing a very similar setup, fishing it out in Hydrilla on Lake Toho. You can actually just fish this exact same rig, kind of like you would a spinner bait, throwing it in the exact same places that you would a spinner bait. The flashy swimmer comes in a lot of different sizes, three aughts, four aughts, five aughts, six and seven aughts for even bigger swim baits. But again, adding this hook with the blade, this flashy swimmer, it just creates something different down there. It's something different that the fish may have not seen before. And that is what's gonna help you to get a lot more bites. But again, there are times, you know, if it's extremely still outside, that may be a time where I don't add a blade. Now, don't forget, you can pick up some of these blades and spinners at sportsmansoutfitters.com. And my friend and fellow content creator, you may know him as Mikey Balls, actually just put out a video where he adds spinners onto a swim bait in a really unique way. I'm gonna link that video right here because I think you guys are really gonna enjoy that video if you like this one. Comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.